Hello, I'm a scientific officer of the Hong Kong Observatory. Having experienced the past tropical cyclone season, you may know that the tracks of tropical cyclones are indeed changeable. In this episode, I'll introduce to you the mechanism behind tropical cyclone motions and some basic conceptual models of tropical cyclones. Tropical cyclone tracks can generally be categorized into straight and recurving track types. For straight tracks in the northern hemisphere, tropical cyclones normally keep moving west to northwestwards after their formation. Tropical cyclones that form over the western Pacific will enter the South China Sea via the Philippines, the Luzon Strait, or approach the coast of southern China after crossing Taiwan. For recurving tracks, most of them will turn northwards in the seas east of Taiwan, passing near the Ryukyu Islands, then turn northeastwards and edge towards the vicinity of Japan. Otherwise, tropical cyclones that form over the South China Sea, if they're slow-moving, will generally have more complicated and changeable tracks, resulting in a higher level of uncertainty. As slow-moving tropical cyclones affect a certain region for a longer period of time, they will generally bring more precipitation to the region. Due to the distribution of sea temperatures and atmospheric circulation systems, there are seasonal variations in tropical cyclone tracks. These charts show the seasonal distribution of the tropical cyclone track density in the western North Pacific. From winter to spring, both the tropical cyclone tracks and their points of recurvature are generally located more to the south. As summer begins, the tracks start shifting northwards, and the point of recurvature will also be more to the north. In midsummer, tropical cyclone tracks generally reach their northernmost positions. And so there will be more tropical cyclones affecting Korea and Japan. As autumn commences, the tracks and points of recurvature start shifting southwards. Particularly in late autumn, most of them are westwardly straight-moving tracks. Also, recent research has shown that there is a poleward shifting trend in both the tropical cyclone track density and the latitude where tropical cyclones reach peak intensity in their life history over the western North Pacific. The movement of tropical cyclones is influenced by different factors. The environmental wind, also known as steering flow, is the most critical factor in determining how tropical cyclones move. This steering flow is closely related to the Earth's atmospheric circulation system. This mainly includes the intertropical convergence zone near the equator, as well as trade winds, subtropical high pressures, and westerlies in both hemispheres. Synoptic scale weather systems are crucial in providing the steering flow for tropical cyclones. The most dominant systems are the subtropical ridge of high pressure and upper level westerly troughs in mid latitudes. After forming in low latitudes, tropical cyclones generally move west to northwest along the southern periphery of the subtropical ridge. When they reach the western periphery of the subtropical ridge, they'll start adopting a northward track. Once they've moved past the ridge axis, they will recurve to the northeast. Upper-level westerly troughs may weaken the subtropical ridge, inducing a weak point or causing it to retreat eastwards, hence providing the chance for tropical cyclones to recurve. The steering flow for tropical cyclones can generally be represented by the wind field of a certain altitude or the averaged wind field of multilayer upper-level winds. If a tropical cyclone has developed into maturity, we can simply use the flow field at 500 hectopascals, which is the mid-level point of the atmosphere, or 5,000 to 6,000 meters above ground. In the following example, the subtropical ridge of high pressure, or upper-level anticyclone, in the western Pacific extends westwards to southern China. As the tropical cyclone is dominated by its steering flow, it keeps moving west-northwestward along the southern periphery of the subtropical ridge and enters the South China Sea. Moving tracks of tropical cyclones can be explained by several major conceptual models. In the first conceptual model, there are two or a discontinuous subtropical ridges of high pressure. The tropical cyclone, located in the southern periphery of the eastern subtropical ridge, moves west to the northwest initially. When it enters the coal or weak wind region between the two subtropical ridges, it will turn northwards, then enter the mid-latitude westerlies and turn northeastwards or even eastwards. 
In the second conceptual model, there are also two or a discontinuous subtropical ridges of high pressure, but the eastern subtropical ridge extends towards the southwest. The tropical cyclone located between the two ridges will then move northeastwards. After entering the mid-latitude westerlies, it will further turn to move eastwards. This conceptual model is called the northward-oriented track. The third conceptual model also belongs to the northward-oriented track model. In addition to the setting of subtropical ridges of high pressure in the second conceptual model, there is a massive monsoon vortex. In the northern hemisphere, the airstream of this monsoon vortex spirals anticlockwise. Being influenced by the steering flow of this monsoon vortex, two tropical cyclone track scenarios may occur. 1. First, being carried by the steering flow of the eastern subtropical ridge and the monsoon vortex and move northwards. Then, move into the coal region between the two subtropical ridges. Finally, enter the mid-latitude westerlies and turn northeastwards. 2. Remain carried by the steering flow of the monsoon vortex and move northwards at first. Then, turn westwards and enter the steering flow of the western subtropical ridge. Okay, we've come to the end of this episode. In the next episode, I'll introduce more about tropical cyclone tracks to you. Goodbye.